I'm gonna go home. You heading my way? Oh, shucks. Malcolm's getting some tonight. My name is Jasmine Diaz. I'm a celebrity matchmaker and dating strategist. What a dating strategist does is help singles strategize their dating life. So what I look at is the full scope of who a person is, what their goals are as it relates to their dating life, and I create a path essentially to help them find their one. I don't know what to expect to be honest about a dating simulator. It might be like real life, it might not be. I'm curious to see. So I'm building a dad right now. I think I want him to have realistic body type. So no, that's not realistic either. This, this um, dad looks like my husband actually. Okay, let's just go here. We're gonna go with this dad. Cause I think this represents real people. Let's change your outfit, dad. Jeez, they don't really give you too many options here, but all right, it's, dad's looking good right now. Malcolm Roberts. Here we go. Whoa. Okay, Amanda says, whoa, I haven't seen these in years. I pull out one of the dusty albums from the top of the pile and we begin looking through it. Aw, look at the baby. Ah. The only way your father and I, the only way your mother and I, okay, I'm confused. I, I'm just gonna go with this. The only way your father and I continue to get you to stop crying. Oh, he's gay. I didn't, I just realized now we switched. Okay, I'm down with that. The only way your father and I could get you up is to stop crying was to put the glasses on you. So Amanda and I pile into the car, finally, and take one last look at the old house. So many memories here. Hard to believe your father and I brought this place, bought this place almost 20 years ago. We pull up for the new house and step outside. The lawn is freshly mown. At, wait, it's a for sale sign, okay. Got that. Maybe Malcolm meets the guy across the street. Gotta get my hands on a nice hot cup of, okay, let's do this. Malcolm's going somewhere, finally, yeah. with Amanda. <laughs> Amanda looks like a teenage girl. She should, she should be out, you know, doing her own thing. At least when I'm home, some random guy isn't gonna come up and sit on the recliner next to me. I think you need more random guys in your life, Malcolm. Dad, are you just afraid to meet new people? Finally, push him out. We walk inside. Hey, yeah. All right, look at this dude. I like him. Got tats. I'm feeling the dreads and the facial hair. Welcome to the coffee spoon, guys. How's it going? <laughs> That's at least how I'm thinking he's supposed to sound. I like this guy. Malcolm seems a little too buttoned up though. That's my own clothing choice though. So what did it be? We have options. Let's not make you too hipster. Let's just go with black coffee. Oh, hearts, connection. Feeling this, I'm getting somewhere. Matt, a classic. Malcolm, I don't get it. Oh, it's a pun. Godspeed, you. Black Emperor is really amazing and influential. Okay, now we're getting a little Hey. Too deep. I'm doing the thing again. Yes, rambling. Malcolm's not really dropping any hints that he's interested. I mean, I think that Matt's been, was showing little signs like, hey, I'm kind of, you know, there might be something there. This couch is actually pretty comfy. Maybe not comfier than that couch, but it's all right. Good lumbar support. I'm kind of feeling like Malcolm is a little bit of a square. He's a little socially awkward. So it's a, for me, figuring out where that comes from and, and working on ways to overcome some of that, because he seems like he has a little anxiety. This place right next to our house, that guy seems not only cool, but also just as uncomfortable with talking to other people as you. Yes, Amanda, see, Amanda is the smartest one in this situation, in my opinion. She should be the matchmaker. You should totally become friends with him. I like what you're thinking. Malcolm, hmm, I don't know. I can't meet new people if I always stay inside and also don't go outside and also don't talk to people. That is true, I tell people this all the time. This is very common, actually. <laughs> people think they can meet other people by staying in the house. You ought to come by when my daughter's hanging around the shop. You two might get along. Okay, so I like that they both have kids. This is working somewhere. Malcolm, yeah. I'm sure we'll maybe come in from time to time. Okay, he's totally missing the hint. You know what? Let me get you guys' opinion on something. I'm working on a new banana bread recipe. Okay, he cooks, I like this. And I need help coming up, 
coming up with a name for it. So we're naming this thing now. This is, this is a really important moment. We're making decisions that will impact the future of this coffee shop. Right, said Banana Bread. I'm really connecting this one, it's working. Like right said Fred, see, I'm with you. I film the music. But now it's about banana bread. I think your youngsters would like it. You youngsters, what? Malcolm, come on. Right said banana bread, strong decisions. I wanted to say baby because I thought it would sound cool, but once I said it, I realized it just doesn't sound good coming from my mouth. Oh. This is getting intense right now. Okay, so I'm wondering now, are they the only two people in this coffee shop? Because Matt is spending an awful lot of time here. Clearly suggesting that he's interested. Matt, see? Sounds good when I... Wow. Oh, now there's another man. Across the way, a man catches my eye. He sits by himself, brooding over a cup of coffee. I hastily look away, hoping he didn't catch me staring. We finish our drinks and head out. Hey. Thanks for stopping in. Take care. I think Matt was doing a great job expressing interest, offered some free food, which you only do to someone that you're kind of feeling. And Malcolm just missed all the hints. As we're walking home, I hear heavy footsteps come up behind us. Malcolm, bro, turn around, I'm greeted by a familiar face jogging up to us. Oh, there's some hot dudes up in this neighborhood. And why do they all have kids? Where's the moms in this situation or the other dads? Everyone's a single parent. Like, are none of the relationships actually going well? Craig? Oh. Bro, holy. Wow, I haven't seen Craig in forever. Oh. Amanda, this is my friend Craig. We went to college together. We were roommates for a while too, I bet. Are you babysitting? Mm -hmm. Nah, dude, River's my kid. Man, it has been a long time, feels like a one minute we're rolling up to exams with bad hangovers and the next we're both fathers. How have you been, man? It seems like they have a really good rapport. It's not awkward or weird. I'm assuming Craig is single. We'll see. I mean, I, I'm liking it so far. Wait, he has twins? You have three kids? Ain't life something, bro? Right? The dialogue is good. I mean, what's great about it, Malcolm's not weird. That's half the battle there. The Craig I knew is not fit to be responsible for living thing, including and especially himself one time. Watched him drink an entire jar of marinara sauce for dinner. It gets like that sometimes. He was jogging, he's a totally different person. I gotta say, Craig is doing a great job for a dad of three. I have one kid and I look a hot mess most times. Anyway, we better get home. Malcolm's going out tonight? Let's go clubbing, Malcolm. I'm gonna put on a nice outfit and go tear it up on the dance floor. How old is he supposed to be with this lingo? I'm just kidding, I'm actually going to... Oh, he's not going to the club? You just disappointed my whole life. <sighs> Let's go watch a, watch the game. While you do that, I'm gonna do drugs and commit some light arson. She's having a whole lot more fun. Just as I'm heading out, the doorbell rings. I walk over to the door and open it. Hello? <laughs> handsome, really? Handsome, clean cut man stands at my door brandishing a plate of cookies. He moved into like the right neighborhood. There's nothing but men everywhere. My daughter, Christy, wanted me. So they're all single dads with daughters. Now this is starting to feel like a conspiracy. My daughter, Christy, wanted me to let you know she baked them herself. What's interesting to me is that Malcolm is attracting all these people. Most people have a hard time getting like one person to approach him. This guy got like, I don't know, three people in one day. I'm sorry, can you close the door real quick? I look at Joseph quizzically comply as after a second I hear a knock on the door opening it I see Joseph standing there with a huge smile I'm your new neighbor Joseph I promise not to talk about your dead spouse this time I'm throwing a barbecue mm. oh so they're starting over okay he's getting invited out is this a date is this not a date also for kids it's perfectly normal amount of children to have well neighbor I'll let you go to bed see you at 3 p.m. we got a date on day one look at that Malcolm did much better and maybe the neighbor's much better speed for him. He's clearly got something attractive about himself that he's attracting all these people. There are obviously some parallels to real life dating in terms of the exchanges you have with people and all of that, just the social interaction. What's cool is kind of seeing how he is progressing in terms of like his social ability with dating in general, the more you do it 
the better you become, the more you put yourself out there, the more you communicate. It's almost like flexing a muscle. A big burned out neon sign above a tiny dive bar. Jim and Kim's, huh? All right, I'll do. One beer, please. Sure thing. I'm actually really proud that he decided to get out of the house to begin with. You can get so used to like your routine, just going from like job to home and not really considering anything else in between. So I think it's great. He's doing something about it. Middle-aged woman, hand holding a nearly empty wine glass, saddles up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close to me. Hey, sailor. Oh, hello. Ah. Good to see this fresh meat in here. Go, girl. Are you watching the game? Mary's forward. Oh, I love that team. And also love that game. I love someone who knows their way around balls. Whoa, Mary. I'm getting the impression that she's a little drunk. Probably. Buy a gala drink, Mary. Don't buy Mary a drink, because Mary needs to get home safe. Suit yourself, sailor. I hear an affirmative grunt from another man at the bar. Go team! Oh, this is the guy from the coffee shop. In my opinion, my team is far superior. I don't know if I like this guy yet. Based upon our win-loss record, I say that my team is superior. Conversation ends there, and we both go back to silently rooting for our respective teams. The game is close, with both sides playing their hardest to win, but in the end, my team prevails Quiet cheers ripple throughout the bar. I raise a respectful glass at the man drinking whiskey who raises his in response. An unspoken truce has been formed. Okay. My name is Robert. You must be new here. Mary already hit on you? <laughs> yeah. Are you a whiskey fella or a beer fella? Malcolm, life choices. Let's see. Do we like shots? Let's do some shots. I'm, I'm a good matchmaker with this game. I'm just getting it. Robert nods to Neo, who serves up two shots of whiskey. Here's to your health. Man, this guy is mysterious and cool. Hey. See, but I feel like this guy is out of, is not his type. Robert signals to the bartender for another round. What are you doing here tonight? Trying to make friends. I'm new in town, figured it might be good. Okay, so I like that Malcolm feels more comfortable. He's clearly into this dude and he's really trying hard. I'm gonna go home. You heading my way? Oh, shucks. Malcolm getting some tonight? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Robert and I leave the bar and find ourselves walking in the same direction. We get to Robert's house, which is just a few houses away from mine. We stop and he turns to me. Mm. Oh man, I don't kiss and tell Malcolm. Mm. Are we doing this or what? I think it would be a mistake. I think Malcolm wants to be in a relationship, in a serious relationship with someone who's like him. It really comes down to the end goal, right? So if you're looking for a serious long-term relationship, you know, having casual fun kind of takes you off the right track. Woo! He's got options, but then he's got a date. I mean, oh, this is so tough. I think it would be a mistake for him to do this. So I'm just gonna say thank you. No, thank you. Better call it a night. That's the professional me. The party me would say, let's do it. I arrive at Amanda's school, check the front desk. You must be Malcolm. This period's almost over. Would you mind waiting in the back? Mr. Vega's supposed oh. to be inside middle schoolers, right? In a way, I kind of feel like Mr. Vega would be more Malcolm's type. They're both like intellectuals, it seems. I don't normally do these impromptu teacher meetings, but as sure as you know, Amanda's very bright student. I'm concerned about her. What's going on? I don't know. Amanda has never been the most engaged student, but I know she cares. I just wanted to ask, is everything okay at home? We just moved. On my way out, I stopped thinking for a moment. I turned to Hugo. Hey, Hugo. Ah. Yes. They ever catch that rye? Hmm? Yes. See, told you. Malcolm has an effect on everybody, it seems. Now, wouldn't it be a surprise if all the men that he's crossed paths with show up at the same place at the same time? Because that's how life is. Well, we better start getting ready. We definitely don't want to be late. Wait, no. We have to be fashionably late. Who shows up at a cookout on time? We're going early, just because you said that. Head out of the door and Amanda reluctantly follows. I guess we're not as early as we thought we were. Joseph's backyard is already packed with people. Hey, there's Joseph. 
I waved to get his attention. Welcome. I'm so glad you two are here. Let me introduce you to my family. Kids, come over here. This is Chris, my yeah. eldest. Hi, mm. this is Christian and Christy, my twins. Ah. They stare creepily and say nothing. Oh. Well, they are kind of creepy. There's our youngest, Krish. Wait, where's Krish? Maybe Mary put him in his crib. Oh no, it's the woman from the bar the other night. Oh, interesting. The plot thickens. What is she doing here? Oh, and how can I forget my lovely wife, Mary? Uh -huh. This is our neighbor, Malcolm, and his daughter, Amanda. I'll shake your hand, but I have a glass of wine that I need to tend to. Okay, they have a real weird relationship. Mary leaves, and oh God, this is so awkward. I wonder if Joseph knows. I wonder if Mary knows that Joseph knows. I wonder if Joseph knows that Mary knows that I know. It's really how people think. My wife has a wonderful sense of humor, but please, you two enjoy the barbecue. All the guys are really excited to meet you. All the guys. Let me introduce you to Damien. Joseph beckons a tall man in gothic attire over the conversation. Good evening, friends. <laughs> Mysterious. <laughs> That's probably the best word I have. If ever you're interested, it would bring me great pleasure to host you for a spot of afternoon tea. Wow, uh, yeah, that sounds rad. Ah. Splendid, great. I bet you're excited to get to know everyone better. Hope you both enjoy yourselves. Isn't that the barista? See, I knew all the men would show up. Isn't that Amanda's teacher? Hey, I know Craig. Wait a second, all these people live in our cul-de-sac. That can't be right, I better investigate. I think Craig is a friend, but Matt and Hugo, the teacher and the guy at the coffee shop, were better choices. So I'm gonna go with that. Matt and Hugo seem to be embroiled in an intense discussion. Craig looks on, smiling politely. I walk over to say hello. Well, I don't think it's fair to try and compare two art movements like that. See, this is totally Malcolm. The feeling that I get is that Malcolm is really smart um, and a little quirky, but he doesn't want to be. I'm staying in this zone because I feel like that's more authentic. It's pretty nice. Okay, so we're talking about the neighborhood now. Yay. Seems like your daughter's daughter is fitting in fine. Amanda comes over with Daisy and Toe. Dad, look, I'm making friends. Amanda, you remember the cool barista from the coffee shop and my old college friend and uh, your teacher. It's an interesting dynamic between like the three options that are here. Uh, one to me is very clearly a friend. And the teacher who I originally thought was like, okay, you know, a more, of an intellectual, very common in terms of interest. I think he's he's a little too much. Overall, I feel like the coffee guy, although he doesn't have like the best, most amazing job, might actually be a better fit. Sometimes people want a partner who makes the same amount of money as them or has like similar career interests, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the right option for you. Sometimes someone who has less or um, does something completely different than you do can still be a really good choice. The social um, exchanges were pretty realistic, meeting people at the coffee shop, at the park. I mean, these are common places where you tend to meet people, so I think the game got it right in that regard. I think the scenarios that are present in the game are real life scenarios, so in that way, it might be a good tool to help someone feel more comfortable, for sure.